Hello YouTube, Chris Klein here again uh, at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio. And we are here today to talk about Focusrite's Scarlet line of interfaces and uh, mic preamplifiers. As you can see here, we have quite a collection that we want to discuss and we want to try to uh, give you all the salient points of each device and how it can benefit you and your studio setup uh, and maybe some common uses as well. So uh, hang tight and we're going to get started here in one second with the Scarlet Solo that's here in the very front. We're going to unbox these for you too so you can get an idea of what they look like and, and uh, how they smell. So uh, let's get started. All right, the Scarlet Solo. As you can see, it's a pretty small box, and we're actually going to open this box up. This is the first interface that we're gonna talk about. It is the most basic interface that they have, and by basic, I mean it, 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 the least amount of inputs and outputs. There's really nothing basic about it, honestly, at the end of the day, because it's a really, really great interface. As you can see, it's a really, really sturdy red metal box. Uh, most, of the, most of the Focusrite interfaces are like this, uh, and this one is particularly small. It is the, the Scarlet Solo, uh, so this is going to fit into uh, your computer bag or your backpack with great ease for portability, so you can record on the go uh, pretty much anywhere. Now, the front of the device has one mic input and one instrument or line input, which is switchable, so it's a true high-Z input if you're a guitar player, for instance, and then you have separate gain controls or, or uh, pots, trim, mic or line trim for each input, as well as a monitor control. And then you have a headphone output. Now the, the monitor can be switched to direct monitor, which means that you're actually just feeding the input directly into the output through the interface and it's not going through the computer. It's a little bit different. You're not going to experience any latency if you do that. And if you don't have it switched like that, the latency is very, very low. But that's going to come into play with your DAW and how you have your DAW set up as well. The back of the device has a USB input. So this is powered via USB. And then you have an unbalanced right and left output, which is an RCA style output. Um, this supports sample rates all the way down to 44.1 and up to 192K, which is amazing uh, for this uh, tiny box. Tremendous value packed into this interface, the Scarlet Solo. It also comes with a bunch of software, and they all do. A bunch of software, uh, Ableton Live Lite, Pro Tools First, some samples, and some other software instruments. So again, the value is tremendous. Portable, mic input, line instrument input, volume control here. This is a great box, especially if you are a singer-songwriter and your primary instruments are your voice and guitar or some other instrument. Uh, again, this is just one input though, so it's gonna be mono. Um, but tremendous value in this small little box. Highly recommended. Next up is the Scarlet Solo Studio. So we're looking at the same interface, but this time you're get, getting an entire package. You're getting headphones, a microphone, a mic cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up real fast. And as you can see, we have these beautiful black and red headphones, uh, close-eared, nice big earmuffs, you know? Take this off, you look like Princess Leia or something, right? Let's set these here. And then we have this little condenser microphone. Really great build. It's really great quality. Um, it is cardioid, so it's going to pick up from the front, reject everything else from the back and the sides, theoretically. It's always going to be a little bit of bleed. Uh, and then you also get the mic clip or the mic attachment. It's not really a clip, is it? It screws in. We'll call it the clip. That's the generic term, right? So it's really a great package, and of course, we have the interface here. I'm not gonna open this one up because we've already seen it and everything. And then it comes with all the software that I had mentioned before. So you kind of get everything in one neat little tidy package, um, really that you need to just start recording right out of the box. And if you are, let's say, not a singer-songwriter, but you wanna get into the podcasting world, well, here you go, you're ready to rock. You've got a beautiful mic, great interface, cable, clip, headphones, the whole shebang. It's all right here. Tremendous value once again. Everything is built really well. This mic sounds really, really great. The pre is really, 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 really clean, excuse me. 
It's gonna capture the voice really, really well. And then if you are the singer-songwriter, well then once again, we have that one solo input on the front as well for your hi z uh, guitar output or uh, some other instrument that has a line level coming off of it, whether it be negative 10 or plus four. Very, very cool, great package, you can't go wrong. Next up is the 2i2. Now this is a step up from the solo. Let's unbox it really quickly. Okay, so as you can tell, uh, once again we have the red durable metal case. It's not too much larger than the Solo, so it's still incredibly portable. Um, you know, great for if you're gigging on the go or you want to record on the fly somewhere, you've got your handy Focusrite Scarlet interface on you at all times. But with this one, we now have two mic inputs, uh, Phantom Power, which we also have on the Solo. I'm afraid I didn't mention that. So Phantom Power for a condenser microphone so we can send power to it. And these mic inputs also double as quarter inch inputs as well, which will support, uh, once again, line level devices, as well as instrument high Z. Uh, another thing that we have here, or another option that we have, is we have a monitor control, as well as a separate headphone output. So that's kind of nice. We can have our monitors, or our monitor control is feeding our studio monitors, or some other type of uh, device. And then our headphone, once again, can be switched to direct monitor so we can actually feed what's going into the inputs directly into our headphones. Now, if we go to the back of the device, uh, we still have our standard USB connection. This comes at the cable once again, so it's powered by USB. And this time, our line outputs, they get a little bit of an upgrade. Now we have balanced quarter inch outputs. Right, where with the Solo, we had RCA unbalanced outputs. This time we have balanced quarter inch outputs. I'm not gonna go into all the details of balanced versus unbalanced, but I can tell you that balance is just a little bit better. Um, so, tremendous value. Once again, sample rate from 44.1 all the way up to 192. Two mic inputs or dual mic input, uh, line input, instrument input, separate monitor control from our headphone output. Really, really great. All the software, portable, sturdy, really cool. We actually use this one box here, not this exact box, but the same model uh, we use for recording pianos here in the shop, and it's amazing. The pre's are really, really clean. They're not gonna do great things if you, if you distort them, or if you try to overdrive them, like a Neve 1073 or something like that. You're moving into a whole nother level then, but for clean preamplifiers, these are kind of becoming the standard with uh, a lot of these um, A to D boxes or, or interfaces. They're really, really nice. So great package here, really, really cool. Next up is the 2i4. We are expanding our feature set a little bit more. Let's open it up. All right, so as you can see, we have the uh, red metal case again, really solid. A little bit bigger than the, than the Solo and the 2i2. Still pretty portable, you know, so if you wanna take it with you on the go, Shouldn't be a big issue. You might want to have a separate case for it so it doesn't get banged up in your computer case or, or a backpack, but a backpack could probably do the trick. So let's talk about the uh, front panel, the inputs and outputs, how they've changed, and we'll also talk about the, the rear of the device as well. So once again, we have two mic, uh, dual mic instrument inputs uh, or, or mic line instrument inputs, so it'll accept an XLR as well as a quarter inch cable. Uh, whether it be balanced or unbalanced, and it can be line or instrument. Two controls for our gain, our, our preamp or line amplifier, and this time we have two pads for the mic input. So if the mic input is too hot right off the bat, we can attenuate it by pressing down these pad controls. Once again, or pad buttons, excuse me. Once again, we have our button for phantom power for 48 volts to feed to our condenser microphones. This is gonna feed phantom power to both microphone inputs. So if you're plugging in a ribbon microphone, beware, you might blow out the ribbon. So as we continue to move over uh, to our, our output section, if you will, we have a few more selections this time. Uh, one of the things they've added is this direct monitor circuit, which is really cool, switchable between stereo and mono. And then we have this pot right here, right? And as we turn this potentiometer, Really, it's a balance control. As we start to turn this clockwise, 
basically what we're doing is we're creating a blend of the inputs on here and the output of our DAW, which is really quite nice. If you're doing overdubs, you're gonna to wanna to hear both, right? Having the input going through, we're not going to experience any latency for one, and we can also hear what was recorded before. Now the stereo mono switch, it's a little unique, and the way that it works is it allows you to hear what's happening with the left input and right input, or one and two, happening in each ear, or you can just switch to mono and it blends both inputs into a mono signal. It sums them, which is really quite nice. Once again, we have our monitor output for our studio monitors, and then we have a headphone output, and we can actually change the source of the headphone output, and as you can see right here, well, you probably can't see it because it's really, really tiny, but it says one, two, and three, and four, and we're gonna get to that in one second. Here's the headphone output and the level. So as we move to the back of the device, once again, USB, powered over USB, comes with the USB cable, and now we also have standard MIDI out and MIDI in five pin DIN connectors for those of us that need to have MIDI facilities in our setup, uh, which is really, really nice because now you, you don't have to worry about you know, MIDI over USB for one or purchasing another uh, MIDI interface of some kind. It's all built in here for you, cool? Now, we have more outputs on the back of this we, or, or uh, more, it's more configurable. So you will see here that we have unbalanced outputs and this time we have two pairs or three or four unbalanced outputs and then we have balanced quarter inch outputs as well. Now you're wondering what, why we would have four outputs in the back of this and that also comes back to this switch right here where we can actually change the source of what we're listening to, outputs one and two and three and four. And this allows us to interface with a mixer for instance and we can actually have four separate outputs feeding our uh, mixer so we have more control on our mixer and can manipulate the balances as well as EQ, compression, and other things with greater fluidity. Um, also probably really, really useful for DJs that are trying to cue off of different sources, right? So if you're a DJ, for instance, and you're running Ableton or you're using Serato in your setup and this is gonna be your main interface, well now you can switch between what you're listening to if you're not monitoring off of your DJ mixer or if you don't have that type of facility. You can switch between those uh, outputs, which is really, really cool. Greater flexibility, a little bit bigger. Uh, everything else still applies. Software sample rates from 44.1 all the way up to 192. And I don't know that I've mentioned the bit depth yet. So uh, also 24 bits. So lots of, lots of clarity, um, lots of uh, headroom. Um, the pre's, once again, really, really clean. They're all sharing the same pre's, really, really nice. You don't wanna drive them too hard because they will distort. It's not gonna be pretty, but they are really, really clean and really, really accurate. Uh, this is the 2i4. The Scarlet 6i6, still moving up. Let's unbox this. So once again, we have the familiar red uh, metal casing, very sturdy, probably not quite as portable as the other devices. I mean, it's not a hulking beast of an interface, but there is a little more, there's a little more to this uh, as far as the form factor is concerned, you know, stepping up from the uh, 2i4, the 2i2, and the Solo. So let's look at the front of this. Once again, we have two mic inputs, and these are also instrument inputs. So mic and instrument. The line inputs are actually going to be on the back on this device, but we'll come back to that in a second. So uh, mic and instrument, uh, XLR and quarter inch once again. We also have phantom power, and there's also a pad that can be enabled, but the controls are not here on the box for the pad. Now, as we move over, we also have our monitor, and we also have, if you look here, we have two headphone outputs, one and two, which is pretty nice. We can control the master level of the headphone outputs going to our, our talent that is recording. If we go to the back of the box, we have the input for the power, power switch. And now we've added these SPDIF inputs and outputs. And you're probably wondering, well, what does SPDIF mean? It's a protocol. It's Sony Philips Digital Interface is what it stands for. And it allows you to, excuse me, it allows you to send digital signals over a coax or an RCA type cable. Um, you've got stereo out and stereo in. So this actually gives you two more inputs and outputs. Now you're wondering, well, why would I, you know, what am I gonna use these digital inputs and outputs for? 
It depends. Any number of devices are going to have digital inputs and outputs that conform to the SPDIF standard. It could be an effects processor, a keyboard, uh, maybe you're grabbing something off of a camera. Who knows? There, it just it exists. Uh, maybe you have an old DAT player, uh, another interface that you're trying to work with that has a SPDIF connection. It's just another input and output stereo, digital ones and zeros, so whatever uh, sample rate you're at. We also have USB, so this is going to allow us to communicate with our computer. MIDI inputs and outputs, once again. So if you have MIDI equipment in your studio setup that has a standard five pin DIN type of connection, well, here you go. You don't need a separate interface anymore. We also have four line outputs, and then, as I'd mentioned before, two line inputs. So why do we have four line outputs? Well, there's any number of reasons why we have four line outputs. As we said before in our last example, oh, and these are also balanced quarter inch, where before we had the four outputs that were unbalanced RCA. This will allow us to spit out four individual outputs or two stereo outputs, so we can manipulate our signal on a mixer or through a, a, a sorry, like a standard uh, uh, recording type of mixing console, like a little Mackie or a Soundcraft or something like that. Or into a DJ mixer of some kind, so you can have two different feeds for your headphone cues. Or you can use these for you know separate headphone outputs. Uh, they would be mono or stereo, so you have two. You would have two stereo headphone outputs, or four mono. So you've just expanded how many people you can feed cues to. Now we don't have a whole lot of inputs on here, so you're probably not going to have a whole lot of people recording. But it just gives you more flexibility. Once again, sample rates supported from 44.1 all the way up to 192. Um, what am I forgetting here? Comes with all the software once again, uh, and uh, some of these other boxes also have the Focusrite control software, which will allow you to manipulate and mix what's happening with the box inside of your computer. Um, beyond that, that's what this box does. A little more flexibility. Cool? And we're moving on up, just like the Jeffersons, right? The 18i8. More inputs, more outputs. Let's look at it. Okay, bigger box, still red, metal. More functionality, more inputs, more outputs. Turbo boost, flux capacitor. This thing is pretty rad. <clears throat> so if you look at the front, we have four mic or instrument inputs. We have phantom power, which is switchable in pairs, so phantom power for these two, phantom power for these two, one, two, three, and four. You've got your trim or your gain for your inputs. And then we come over here and we have our monitor control once again, monitor level or volume, and our two headphone controls as well. This time we can actually mute it, which is kind of nice, right? Okay, let's move around to the back. Oh, and these pre's also have pads as well. Move around to the back. Power switch once again, this does need a wall wart. Uh, power is required, it's more robust, it's more technology, USB is not gonna cut it. So there's our power switch, there's the input for our power. Once again, we have the SPDIF input and output. So uh, stereo, digital in and out via the SPDIF coax connection. Again, it's kinda like an RCA cable. And then we have MIDI output and input. Once again, five pin DIN, standard uh, MIDI. Uh, MIDI control or MIDI protocol. It's been like that since 1983. USB connection. This allows us to communicate with our computer. And now we have an optical input. This is the ADAT light pipe protocol. And this is going to carry eight channels of preamp information or, or output from another device into this box, right? So now we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, these are our inputs. One, two, so we're at six, right? Eight here, 14, and then we have four more line inputs on the back, which gives us 18 inputs altogether. That's pretty amazing. Now for our outputs, we just have our monitor outputs this time, one and two, right? And we still have the SPDIF output too, which can be utilized for it's up to you. You might want to use this with a higher end A to D converter, or excuse me, D to A converter for your monitoring for your front end, right? So your ones and zeros are being crunched at a higher rate.
However, this box does a fantastic job on its own. So we just have the two outputs here. The additional eight inputs via ADAT, once again, fantastic. And I'm gonna explain this a little bit further when I move to one of the other boxes so you can have a better understanding of what's, understanding of what's happening. Uh, sample rates are the same, 44.1, all the way up to 192. And you have more functionality with Focusrite software, which will allow you to manipulate things from within your computer, which is pretty nice. So all in all, this is a really, really great box. It will allow you to record, once again, up to 18 channels, uh, which is pretty amazing. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of instrumentation, 18 channels. It's just up to you as to how you're going to uh, make it work for you. Cool box. The 18i20, bigger box, bigger interface. Once again, let's take it out and let's explore the front and the back. Guess what? It's red and it's metal, once again. The face of it is black. It's 19 inches in width, so it conforms to uh, standard audio racks. Uh, this is a cool box. There is a lot happening here, and it really ups the game. Uh, this is gonna be definitely more of a, uh, of a professional type of interface. But uh, let's explore it real fast and, and talk about the ins and outs and uh, other facilities that it has. It, it's slightly different than the others, obviously. So if we look at the front, we've got two mic and instrument inputs, and these can be switched to instrument right here, these buttons on the front, right? We also have phantom power once again, and we also have our pad switches. They've come back to us, which is pretty nice, cool? And we can also turn on phantom power, or when we engage phantom power here, it's going to engage phantom power on the back of the unit too, which has more mic and instrument or line inputs. Um, really, really cool. But let's continue exploring here. So we have these two mic inputs on the front, which are really, really easy to access, obviously. Uh, and then we have all of our trim pots for all of our microphones and or instrument line inputs as well. Now this also comes with a little meter display, which is pretty cool, right? You can look at this real quick and get an idea of what's happening on input. <clears throat> now you probably want to reference your DAW as well, and depending on what DAW you're working in, you might change the way that the meters are actually being displayed. Um, at plasma, VU, K14, K20, blah, 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 blah. There's a bunch of different uh, metering modes. It just depends on what DAW you're in. Probably what industry you're working in. Are you working in music, post, um, mastering? It, it just depends on how you have your, the metering depends on what you're doing. And so the power switch is on the front, which makes sense because there's a good chance that this is going to be racked up. If it's racked up, you can't access the power switch in the back. It's going to be difficult. Unless you have this being fed from uh, a separate power conditioner of some kind where you just flick the master switch on and everything powers up. Uh, it just depends. Now, if we look here, we have our monitor control once again. And this time we have a dim switch, which allows us to drop the level in our control room or in our studio um, by a, a certain amount of dB. And I don't know what that is. It's probably like 10 to 15 or something like that. Um, sorry. <laughs> and then we also have a mute. So we can actually kill our monitors all together. And then here we have our two headphone outputs once again um, with their independent volume controls, which is really, really nice. So let's look at the back of the device. So looking at the back, we have a standard IC type of plug, so it's grounded, very, very important. We have our SPDIF input and output, so once again, stereo channels going uh, in and out. Standard five pin MIDI output and input, so we can link up to our MIDI, MIDI devices, keyboards, MPCs, whatever we have, uh, 16 channels going each way. USB for communication with our computer. And this time we have a word clock output, which will allow us to send the word clock, the digital word clock from this device to something else so they're sharing the same clock. This is important so we don't experience things like jitter and whatnot. Once again, we have our uh, ADAT optical input and output. So we have both this time, right? So we can send information in and out up to eight channels, uh, which is really, really nice with just one cable. So when we get to the Occupy, once again, I'm gonna, I'll explain how these things are going to work together. 
Now we come back to our uh, outputs and the rest of our mic inputs. On this device, we actually have our monitor outputs and then we have eight other mono outputs. And you're th probably thinking like, why do we have eight outputs on this device aside from our monitor outputs or stereo out? We can feed these into a mixer, right? And with this, let's say we have uh, some sort of like little mixing sidecar that we're using. Um, it could be, insert your favorite mixer here. It could be anything as high up as a, like an API box, down to a Mackie, whatever. But you can spit out stem mixes. So let's say, you know, one and two are drums, three and four are keyboards, five and six are guitars, seven and eight are vocals, whatever you wanna do. Or you're just trying to affect things individually, or you wanna use these for hardware inserts, right? So instead of using plugins in the box, you can actually spit information out of here. Like let's say one is a vocal, spit the information out, go into an outboard compressor and bring it back into uh, line input number one and so on and so forth. It just gives you greater flexibility, right? It's definitely more of a professional type of box. And I'm not saying that these other smaller boxes can't be professional boxes, but this just allows you to do a lot more inside and outside of your computer, which is really, really cool. So once again, stereo monitor outputs, eight individual mono outputs, and then we have six mic or line inputs, XLR or quarter inch in the center. So there's a lot happening here. It's really a great box, a little more professional, and I'm not, I'm not saying that these other boxes, excuse me, these other boxes that are over here are not professional as well, this just allows you to do a whole lot more as far as routing into and out of the box and playing with stuff out here in the physical world and not being confined to just plugins. And it just gives you more options really. And it's really up to you and how you configure your studio and what you need it for as to how you're gonna make all these things work for you most effectively. Um, and it's a great price. And we haven't talked about the prices yet. We'll get to that uh, towards the end. I'm just gonna give you a range so you have a kind of a ballpark idea of what's happening as you move up the line. Uh, but, but Really, most of this stuff is not super expensive. The value is tremendous and they work really, really well and they're built like tanks. They're just great, great devices. So we're gonna end our journey with the Scarlett OctoPre Dynamic. Now there is another version of this. It's just the OctoPre without the Dynamic. So I'm gonna kind of sum up uh, both units looking at this one. So let's take this out of the box. Once again, red, metal, sturdy has the black face, but this is just microphone preamps and compressors, right? Eight of the classic Focusrite Scarlett preamplifiers and eight compressors that are in line. The other version of this, the OctoPre, is just the preamps with no compression. So if we look here, we have our microphone preamplifier pots or the trim, and then we have our compression knobs and these buttons that say more. So as we turn up these compression knobs, we're going to compress our signal further, and then as we click on more, it changes the ratio. And all this stuff is program dependent upon how much level is actually coming into the unit and how you turn this up, right? Where eventually you can get it to basically a, a, a limiting function as you bring it all the way up counterclockwise, excuse me. Once again, we have our meters on the front because this can also be used as an interface, not just pre-amplifiers and compression. So we have our meters on the front, and if we come over here, we have a button that says sync. How are we gonna sync this? Internally, through light pipe or ADAT, or through a word clock. Now, if you remember the 18i20, we had that word clock connection on the back. We have that here as well, except this time we have both an input and an output. So once again, we have this meter bridge, so we can actually meter what's happening on input. And as we move over, we have a button that says sync. And this is gonna change how the unit is, is clocking itself or how it's being clocked, where it's getting clocked from. So internal means that the internal clock is happening, the word clock. If we switch it to ADAT, it's gonna be looking to its ADAT input, so an external source for its clock. Or we can actually choose word clock via the B and C connector that we showed you before. Now on this one, we actually have an input and output, but we can actually have this sync to an external word clock. So maybe you're using this just for the eight pre's and not as a standalone interface. Well, your interface that you're using 
you want that to be the master clock and you're gonna feed that to this, cool? That way we don't have weird digital jitter problems and things like that. Um, we can change the sample rate right here by pressing this button, 44.1 all the way up to 192. And then over here, we've got phantom power. It's in banks of four, so one through four, five through eight. And then we also have instrument switches for one and two. And then right here, we have this ADAT to line, and this just changes basically the way the whole unit is operating and how the ADAT inputs and outputs are communicating with the analog inputs and outputs. And then we have our power switch. So now looking at the back, once again, we have the standard three prong grounded IEC connection uh, plug. And then we have two ADAT outs and two ADAT ins. And the reason we have this is as we move up in sample rates, these start to split duties, okay? So if we're at 44.1 to 48, one of these can transmit eight channels either way, in, in or out. But as we start to move up, we're gonna split these to four and four. And then as we get up to 192, two and two. So when you get up to 192, these can only transmit four channels of digital signal in and out, which is still fantastic. It still can carry quite a load of information, uh, inputs and outputs. Then we move over to our word clock in and out. Once again, this could be our master interface, right? So if that's the case, we're not really concerned about either of these. Um, or if we're gonna use, let's say, another octopre in tandem, well then we want the word clock out to feed the word clock in of another octopre, right? One of them has to be the master, and we want them to share a common clock. Does that make sense? Then we go to the front panel, and we would change the one that's gonna actually see word clock, we would set it to receive word clock, so it knows where to clock from. And then we have our line outputs. We have eight individual line outputs, you could assign two of these to be your stereo output or your monitor outs to go to your control room source or your control room volume if you have like a big knob or an SPL controller or something like that, dangerous audio. There's any number of uh, different manufacturers out there that, that, that um, have uh, dedicated control room systems. Um, so we've got eight outputs and then we have our mic pre's and our instrument inputs, right? So we have uh, eight microphone preamplifiers, uh, or excuse me, eight microphone inputs that are XLR, and then we have the quarter inch input in the center, which can be uh, your line input or instrument input as well. So again, lots of technology in here, uh, very flexible. This is a great addition to uh, any home studio or professional studio that needs eight more microphone preamps that are really, really clean really, really nice, not a lot of color, really no color at all, which is great. Once again, can't really distort these. You can't overdrive them or push them too hard because they will clip and it's not gonna be super beautiful. But used properly as a really clean preamplifier, these are fantastic. I'm thinking about adding one of these to my setup at home. I could use eight more pre's for all my keyboards uh, and I can't think of a better solution, honestly. So I said I would give you the price range of these and we started with the Solo. The solo starts at 109, or the solo in the whole line uh, starts us off at 109.99, coming all the way up to the Octopre Dynamic, which is 649.99. Now I told you it was pretty reasonable. These boxes really offer a lot of value, and you know with this here, eight pre's inline compression. I mean, I'm, I don't have one of these in my setup at home, and I'm actually thinking about getting one because I have too many keyboards and drum machines. And this is a perfect solution. I can bypass my patch bay and I can just plug all my keyboards and drum machines into this permanently. It becomes a permanent fixture in my setup. That way they're always ready to rock. Um, $649.99 for eight beautiful pre's and in line dynamics. That's pretty killer. It's a great deal. They're all fantastic boxes. They offer so much portability, great build, great sound. Um, and there, I mean, there's something for pretty much everybody, you know, again, going back to the solo, you've got a mic input and an instrument input. That's beautiful if you're a singer songwriter and you're always on the go and you have your whatever guitar, you've got a baby tailor or whatever, you can plug in and you can start writing wherever you want or moving all the way up to this or the 18i20, 
you know, then you're talking about more of a, you know, I've got a full band that I gotta record. I've got a full drum set. I've got bass, guitar, keys. I need to do all my scratch tracks, or not scratch tracks, but my basic tracking. You can make this happen, and you can do it for well under $1,000. Now, of course, you're gonna need microphones and everything else, but still, I mean, an interface that's gonna handle all of this for you, that clocks in under $700 is really, really great. All right, thanks for tuning in today. As you can see, there's no shortage of options from Focusrite's Scarlet line of interfaces and preamplifiers. Whether you be a solo musician, singer, songwriter, or you need to record a full band, they have a solution for you. They sound great, they look great, they're easy to set up, uh, tons of value packed into these boxes. They're really, really fantastic. Uh, we're actually using the 2i2 to record pianos in the store now because it, the, the preamps are they're fanta they're fantastic. They sound really, really clean, and they capture the piano the way that we need to in conjunction with uh, Borm's A uh, 84, the WA84 microphones in a stereo configuration. Um, so with that being said, uh, if you want to know more about these or, or if you're interested in picking one up, you can always call us or seek us out on the internet. Uh, we exist on all kinds of different channels. And uh, that's all I got for you today. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We will be back with more pro audio videos, so just hang tight. We want to share all this information with you. And uh, I think we're done. Cool? Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, I'm Chris Klein. Alma Music, San Antonio. Cheers.